My girlfriend posted on her alternate Facebook account, does a princess have to marry a prince? Maybe the knight is her true destiny. Pfft. I don't mind if she wants to be a princess. But what kind of princess sneaks around at midnight? Sending flirtatious messages to the knight behind the prince's back. Chapter 1. When she was on a business trip to Xi'an, she sent me a message and quickly retracted it. I waited a few minutes before asking her what she had retracted. And she said it was sent by mistake, but I saw it. She had written, I don't know if it's right to go out with him, but maybe it's just to make up for a past regret. My heart sank at that moment, and I immediately tried to video call her. But she declined. She said she was having dinner with colleagues and it wasn't convenient. I asked if I could see what she was eating. She sent me some pictures of the dishes, and the restaurant's name was visible on the tableware. I looked it up. It was a trendy spot. I held my phone for a moment, then opened the delivery app and placed an order for that restaurant. I added the delivery driver on WeChat and told him I was looking for someone in that restaurant. I asked if he could discreetly take a photo or video. Then I directly transferred 200 yuan to him. Seeing how quick I was, he agreed. I briefly described my girlfriend's appearance to him, and then I waited. During those few minutes, I was conflicted, part of me wanted him to find her, but another part hoped he wouldn't. After three or four minutes, he sent me a photo and asked if it was her. Even though I had mentally prepared myself, I still felt a chill when I saw it. She was having dinner alone with a man, and there were no female colleagues in sight as she had claimed. Then he sent me a few more photos. Although some of them were shaky, I still recognized who the man was. Her high school classmate. Chapter 2. Two months ago, she attended a school reunion and posted a group photo on her social media, which included this man. I remembered it because her best friend commented, Isn't the guy next to you that handsome guy from your class? Triple X. He's still so good looking. My girlfriend responded with a smirking emoji. Her best friend added, But you're also getting prettier. Does he regret it? I asked her about it at the time, and she said this male classmate had pursued her back in school, but she hadn't agreed. Then she added that the guy was about to get married so I shouldn't overthink it. There were about 10 photos, and the way they interacted clearly wasn't normal. I felt conflicted and ended up smoking half a pack of cigarettes. Later that night, I tried calling her again, but there was no answer. Around 10 o'clock, she video called me, standing in the hotel lobby instead of her room. She said she had been watching a performance at the Tang Paradise and didn't hear her phone ring. Now, she was exhausted and wanted to sleep. She hurriedly ended the call, saying she had to get into the elevator. I couldn't sleep that night. I started checking her social media, trying to find any clues. Eventually, I did find something. She had liked a suspicious Facebook post, a close-up of a glass of wine. The timing matched the day of her school reunion. April 20th. This Facebook account had a few routine posts. Nothing special. But there was one female account that was consistently active in the comment section. I followed the trail, did some digging, and I was sure, this was my girlfriend's alternate account. Because on April 20th, this account posted the exact same words she had shared on her WeChat moments that day. Do you still remember the dreams of your youth? Like a flower that never withers. What really made my blood boil was that this account had posted something last night. Turn off the main light, and I can be bolder. Leave a small light on, and you can see me more clearly. You belong only to me, and I belong only to you. It's hard to describe how I felt reading those words. Chapter 3. During this period, she acted completely normal in front of me. We were even discussing marriage, how much dowry to give which hotel to book, which brand of wedding dress to buy, and where to go for our honeymoon. Not a single slip-up. I didn't sleep at all that night. The next day, I asked a friend to help me investigate this guy. I remembered my girlfriend saying that this guy was about to get married, and I needed to confirm it. The next day, my girlfriend's so-called business trip was supposed to end. She messaged me, saying she would still be quite busy and wouldn't have time to reply. Around noon, I saw an update on her alternate Facebook account, a scenic photo with the location tagged at Zian's Tang Paradise. At that moment, my friend also got back to me. My friend was efficient, managing to dig up everything about this guy in just half a day. He works at a well-known insurance company as an agent. His fiancé is a local, working as a children's English teacher, living at home. So they aren't living together yet. My friend also got me the guy's phone number and WeChat ID. Well, it turns out he is indeed about to get married, and these two are both cheating. How nice. At this point, I assumed this was just another cliché story of old flames rekindling after a school reunion. The guy was clearly a jerk, but one thing still puzzled me, did he know my girlfriend wasn't single? I decided to take the initiative. Chapter 4. I created a new account and added this guy, pretending to be a friend of a friend interested in buying insurance. He quickly accepted the friend request. He sent a friendly, hello. I played along, saying I wanted to buy insurance for a family of four and asked if he had any good products to recommend. He was very enthusiastic 
explaining that family insurance should be tailored to the family structure and my budget. He sent me a document to review, saying it contained his company's flagship products and successful cases of custom policies he had designed for clients. He then apologized, saying he was about to board a flight and would get back to me after landing. I checked out his WeChat moments, which were mostly work-related, not as revealing as his Facebook. Two hours later, he messaged me again, bro, I've landed, just let me know your needs and budget. I didn't reply immediately. Instead, I messaged my girlfriend, asking her what time her flight was. She had never told me her flight details, claiming it was because the project's completion time was uncertain. But now I understood, she didn't want me to pick her up. She didn't reply. Ha. Huh. She had no idea I was already at the airport. I hid among the crowd waiting for arrivals, keeping a close watch on the exit. Chapter 5. I saw her walk out wearing sunglasses, arm in arm with a tall man, laughing and chatting. They got into a taxi as soon as they exited, but my car was still in the underground parking lot, so I couldn't follow them. By the time I got home, she was already there. She didn't seem any different, and when she saw me, she enthusiastically rushed to hug me. She explained that she hadn't told me her flight details because she wanted to surprise me. Then she pulled out two bags of pound law from her suitcase, saying she had specially bought them for me despite her busy schedule. Yeah, if she didn't buy those from the airport's souvenir shop, I'll eat my hat. Over the next few days, I acted as if nothing was wrong in front of her. While she was in the shower, I secretly checked her chat history with that man. There were only two words to describe it. Dirty. Filthy. I never knew she could be so wild. A prim and proper lady in public, but a complete seductress in bed, that was her to a T. And to make it worse, it wasn't even on my bed, but someone else's. I messaged the guy on WeChat, telling him that I had a sufficient budget and that I wanted coverage for critical illness, medical, life and accident insurance. I asked him to carefully prepare several plans for me to compare. I also mentioned that if I was satisfied, I would recommend more friends to him. To flaunt my wealth, I accidentally posted pictures of my best friend's luxury car and villa with a pool on my moments, making sure he saw them without revealing too much about myself. The guy became even more enthusiastic, addressing me as bro at every turn. Every morning, he sent me a WeChat message, sometimes reminding me to dress warmly because of the cold and other times warning me about a rainstorm, telling me to carry an umbrella. Damn. Sometimes I woke up disoriented, thinking it was my mom on the other end. Occasionally, I'd reply with a simple thank you. A few days later, I saw an update on my girlfriend's alternate account. You said it was deep affection with shallow fate. I say you weren't brave enough to love. That sentence infuriated me. If he wasn't brave enough to love, fine. I'd step in. After all, I'd spent enough time chatting with this guy. Now was the time to act. Chapter 6. One evening, my girlfriend returned home late from a company dinner, and this time it was true. She even initiated a video call to show me. I messaged the guy on WeChat, he had asked for my phone number, but I never gave it to him. We only communicated through WeChat. I casually asked him about insurance policies that double as investments, whether they were worth buying. He sent me a long message, analyzing the pros and cons, but I didn't read a single word. About 10 minutes later, I sent him another message. I said, even though I'm married, I still can't let go of you, especially after we met this time. It feels like our old feelings have been rekindled, but maybe it's just because my current life is too dull, and I'm craving something new. I don't want to cheat on my wife. He replied with a question mark, and I quickly retracted the message and sent him a voice note. I said, bro, sorry, I sent that to the wrong person. He said it was no problem. He hadn't really paid attention. I immediately called him and asked if he had time to grab some barbecue, telling him I wasn't feeling great and needed someone to talk to. He eagerly agreed, saying, no problem, bro. The reason I dared to meet him was that, from their chat history, I could tell that this guy genuinely didn't know my girlfriend had a boyfriend. She had told him that she had broken up with her short-term boyfriend right after the new year. She was eating my food, living in my house, spending my money on beauty treatments, driving my car to hang out with her girlfriends. And yet, she presented herself as single in front of her old flame. Impressive. I drove to pick him up, and the first thing he said when he got in the car was, Bro, I've never seen this car on your moments. I smiled but didn't respond to that. That's exactly the kind of nonchalance I was aiming for. He kept talking to himself, saying, You rich people are like this. Huh? Switching between different cars must be nice. I think he felt a bit flattered that I had reached out to him. He kept the conversation going during the drive, while I just responded with a few casual remarks. Chapter 7. While drinking. I deliberately acted as if I were in a gloomy mood and explained to him that the message I accidentally sent earlier was actually meant for my ex-girlfriend. Then I asked him, bro, what do you think I should do? I really can't let go. He chuckled and said, I get you, bro. It's normal for a man, 
but you've got a family now, don't let your wife find out. I asked him, bro, be honest with me. If you were in my shoes, what would you do? By that point, he had downed five or six bottles, and his emotions were running high. He finally opened up to me. He said, bro, you won't believe this, but I'm in a similar situation. And then he spilled everything like a dam had burst. He told me that he was engaged, but at a school reunion, he ran into the class beauty from back in the day. Now, she's even more of a goddess, prettier than ever, and he just couldn't resist. After the reunion, the two of them went to a nearby hotel. Hearing this made me feel disgusted, but I didn't show it. Instead, I encouraged him to continue talking. He admitted that he felt a bit guilty toward his fiancée, but the class beauty wasn't happy with just that one encounter and kept asking him out. Eventually, he couldn't find an excuse and lied to his fiancée, saying he was on a business trip, so he could go away with the class beauty for two days. Now, she's really into him and keeps pushing him to break up with his fiancée, but he's not too keen on that, I said then why don't you seriously consider being with the class beauty? He replied, bro, the allure of something new is tempting, but I think it's like these peanuts, good as a snack with drinks, but they can't replace a proper meal. I had to admit, the guy had a point, but where he went wrong was that the peanuts he was snacking on were in someone else's bowl. Chapter 8, he continued, telling me that his fiancé is an only child, her parents, one a doctor and the other a teacher, have pensions to rely on in their old age and they're even willing to help with raising their grandchildren. They've already bought a house for her before the wedding and said the newlyweds can just move in, so they won't have to worry about a mortgage. Hearing this made me despise him even more, so, he doesn't want to break up, not because of who his fiancé is, but because of her family's conditions. I poured him another drink and said, bro, you've got it made, just one look at the reunion, and she's all over you. He chuckled and suddenly leaned in closer, with a mysterious look on his face. Bro, let me tell you something else. I looked at him. Sensing nothing good was coming, he said that when he went back to his hometown for the new year, the class beauty actually approached him first. At that time, she still had a boyfriend, they hadn't broken up yet. The two of them spent two days at a mountain resort, I frowned, recalling that during the last New Year's holiday, there were two days when I couldn't get in touch with my girlfriend. She only sent me one WeChat message each night, saying she was too busy entertaining relatives to check her phone, so that's what really happened. Thinking back, I felt like a complete fool. Chapter 9 it was 2023, and I actually believed her when she said she hadn't checked her phone for two days. I masked my murderous thoughts with the pretense of drinking, calmed myself down, and said with feigned indifference, Bro, that's not very cool. He said it wasn't his fault, that she had been too forward, but since they had had some sort of flirtation back in school, it felt like they were just making up for lost time. He thought that after their New Year encounter, things would be over, but when they met again at the reunion, the class beauty was all over him. What could he do? making up for lost time, my ass. We continued eating and drinking for hours, with him recounting every detail about how he and my girlfriend had met, how many times they'd had meals together, and how many times they'd slept together. In exchange, I fabricated some lies of my own, making him feel a sense of camaraderie with me, almost like he wanted to become sworn brothers. Like hell I'd go that far, he's not worth it. I had initially thought he was just an ignorant cheater, but now I realized he had been putting horns on my head from the start. Can I tolerate that? That night, I went online and ordered a set of lingerie, sending it directly to his fiancée's house. I used his name, trying to make it seem like he accidentally sent it to the wrong address. If he thinks he can nibble on some peanuts while keeping his rice, I'll flip the whole table over. I made a decision to help my girlfriend reunite with her unforgettable first love. Chapter 10 Ever since that night, the scumbag started confiding in me about everything. He complained that his fiancée had recently been acting strangely as if she had discovered something. She suddenly started checking his phone and computer, and her words were always laced with sarcasm and suspicion. Fortunately, he had erased all the traces. Then he mentioned that he was starting to feel nervous and that maybe it was time to cut ties with the class beauty. He admitted that he had indeed gotten too caught up in it all recently. I glanced at my girlfriend, who was sitting on the couch playing with her phone, and sincerely suggested, why don't you ask her out and have a proper talk? Otherwise, I don't think she'll give up easily. If she ever decides to impulsively confront your fiancé, things could get ugly. He replied, bro, you're right. I'll set something up in a few days. Damn, he was talking so openly in front of me. As for my girlfriend, I started deliberately picking fights with her every day. Even when she cried, I wouldn't comfort her. If she argued with me, I would storm out, slamming the door behind me. This went on for a week until one day she coldly told me that she was going out with her girlfriends that night and might not come back. After all. Coming home would just mean more fighting. I told her to go ahead and have fun. After she left, I messaged her best friend, saying I was planning a proposal and wanted her help with some ideas. What? 
You think her best friend might tip her off? Doesn't matter, I wasn't really planning to propose anyway. Her best friend got really excited and immediately agreed to meet up with me that night, along with a few of my buddies, to brainstorm. She even set a time with me. Half an hour later, she suddenly called me, laughing, saying she hadn't slept well the night before and wasn't thinking clearly. She remembered she had plans with my girlfriend tonight and asked if we could reschedule. I smiled and didn't call her out on it, saying it was fine and that there was no rush. That afternoon, I waited outside my girlfriend's office before she got off work. I needed to know where her unforgettable first love was planning to take her today. Chapter 11 At 5.30, when my girlfriend came out, she got into a taxi, and I followed discreetly. They ended up at a western restaurant. I waited a few minutes before going in, wearing a hat and mask to avoid being recognized. The restaurant had a nice ambience, with booth seating and a quiet atmosphere. I told the waiter that I had a reservation and asked if a tall, slim, fair-skinned, beautiful girl had arrived yet. He pointed me in their direction, but I told him I wanted to visit the restroom first. I walked in the opposite direction the waiter indicated, found a discreet spot, and began scanning the room. Sure enough, I spotted them. My girlfriend was all smiles, laughing throughout the entire meal. She kept touching the scumbag playfully, and I secretly took several photos. At first, I wanted to call the scumbag's fiancé, send her the photos, and give her the restaurant's address. She had been suspicious recently but couldn't find any solid evidence. This would have been the perfect chance to confirm her doubts. But then I remembered what the scumbag had said about a breakup sex situation. Right now, they were just having dinner. Even if I sent the address, his fiancé might not come. Or worse, she might be fooled by him again if she did. There was also the chance she might call him, tipping him off. So I decided to wait. I found myself perversely hoping that after dinner, they'd head straight to a hotel. I waited in my car for nearly an hour before they finally came out. I suspected that the scumbag hadn't yet broached the subject, which explained why my girlfriend was still beaming with joy as they walked hand in hand to a nearby hotel. Chapter 12 I quickly followed them and discreetly recorded a video of them entering the hotel. The lobby was too small for me to follow them any further without being noticed. I began calling the scumbag's fiancé. I told her that her fiancé was in a hotel with another woman. At first, she didn't believe me, so I suggested we add each other on WeChat, and I could provide proof. I added her using a fake account and sent her the video. She immediately called me back, frantically asking who the woman in the video was and who I was. I said nothing, simply sent her the hotel's address, and urged her to hurry before they left. About half an hour later, she arrived with a female friend and a burly man. The three of them stormed inside, and I could hear them arguing with the front desk. I didn't need to hear to know that they were asking which room the scumbag was in and that the front desk wasn't giving out that information. Leading to the argument, I tried calling my girlfriend. As expected, there was no answer. I then called her best friend, no answer either. I figured she was probably feeling guilty. I sent messages to both of them, saying that I realized I had been too harsh lately and that I was already driving to her best friend's place to bring her back home. Her best friend called me right back. She said my girlfriend was still angry and that I shouldn't come. I insisted, saying that I had to bring her back tonight. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to sleep. Her tone became a bit unnatural, and she said she'd check with my girlfriend and get back to me. I agreed but told her that if my girlfriend didn't respond, I'd show up at her doorstep to apologize. After hanging up, I calmly waited. Chapter 13 About 20 minutes later, the elevator doors in the hotel lobby opened, and my girlfriend and the scumbag walked out. They ran right into the three-person crew who had been arguing with the front desk. Everyone froze for a moment before the scumbag's fiancé exploded with rage. Without a word, she slapped my girlfriend several times. This woman, who seemed so quiet and reserved, didn't hold back at all when she got physical. After slapping her, she wasn't satisfied and kicked her, cursing her as a shameless homewrecker. My girlfriend cried out in pain, trying to hide behind the scumbag while shouting, Are you crazy? Why are you hitting me? Do you want me to call the police? Hearing this only made the fiancé angrier. She signaled to the burly man to hold back the scumbag, who was trying to protect my girlfriend, and then, along with her female companion, started hitting my girlfriend again. My girlfriend crouched on the ground, covering her head, unable to fight back. You dirty slut, still pretending to be innocent, you've already slept with him, and now you're going to accuse me of slandering you. Then the fiancé did something unexpected, something I hadn't anticipated. She pulled a set of lingerie out of her bag and tried to put it on my girlfriend's head, it was the very same lingerie I had sent her. Come on, let's all see how slutty you really are. This is what he bought for you, right? Why don't you put it on and show everyone? The commotion was so big that the passers-by, who were enjoying the show, all had their phones out, recording. I recorded it too. The front desk staff and security tried to intervene, saying that if it didn't stop, they would call the police. 
The burly man pointed at them and said, with a voice full of authority, go ahead, call them, I'll report you for organizing prostitution here. This woman looks like she's selling herself. If you interfere, you're just covering up illegal activities. His intimidation worked, and the front desk staff and security backed off. The scumbag was completely useless, standing there meekly, only able to weakly say, stop, please stop. His fiancée shouted back, I'm going to deal with this slut first, and then I'll deal with you. Chaos. Absolute chaos. Satisfaction. So damn satisfying. Chapter 14. As much as I wanted to keep watching, I had more important things to take care of, so I left. An hour later, my girlfriend's best friend finally called me back, saying that my girlfriend had had a bit too much to drink and was already asleep at a friend's place. She assured me she'd stay with her, so I shouldn't worry. I said, okay, I'm not worried. The next morning, I called my girlfriend. She sounded down and said she'd be home that night. Good. Just as long as you come back. At 9 o'clock that evening, I heard the fingerprint lock beep, and my girlfriend walked in, looking exhausted. If you looked closely, you could see that her face was a bit swollen. As soon as she walked in, she was stunned. I had decorated the entire living room to look like a dream. White and pink balloons floated from the ceiling, and on the floor, I had laid out a path of red candles, surrounded by rose petals. In the center of the living room was a huge heart made of roses, with a light-up sign in the middle that read, Marry me. Her parents were there too, they lived just two hours away by car, and I had specifically invited them over. I had also invited several of her other friends, filling the room with people. A slideshow of photos of the two of us played on the TV. The whole atmosphere was overwhelmingly romantic and emotional. I stood in front of her, handed her a bouquet, and sincerely said, I know I haven't been good lately. I've reflected on my mistakes and decided to treat you even better from now on. I'm grateful for the days we've spent together and I believe our future will be even better and sweeter. I promise you, in front of your family and friends, that before we get married, I'll buy an apartment and a car, both in your name, to give you the security you need. She was overwhelmed, covering her mouth as tears streamed down her face. After being humiliated and beaten the night before, she returned home to this warm scene. And here I was, this big fool, willing to gift her a car and an apartment. Even Gwendolyn Harleth would be moved by such a gesture. Her parents were thrilled, urging her to say yes while everyone else in the room cheered, say yes, say yes. She was so excited that she was just about to speak when my phone rang. Of course, the ringtone was something I had set up in advance, and I picked the perfect moment to take it off silent mode. I pretended to be surprised as I pulled out my phone. The more I looked at it, the darker my expression became. The room fell silent as everyone stared at me, wondering what was going on. I looked at her deeply, then walked over to her parents and said, Uncle, Auntie, the proposal might need to be postponed. Her parents panicked and asked what had happened. I didn't answer. Instead, I mirrored my phone screen onto the TV and said, See for yourselves. Chapter 15. The photos showed my girlfriend and the scumbag having dinner together, both smiling like they didn't have a care in the world. My girlfriend still had tears on her face, but when she saw the photos, she was stunned. She blurted out, Who took these? I said I didn't know. They were sent to me from an unknown number. But looking at the timestamps on the photos, they were taken during the days you were supposedly on a business trip to Xi'an. Don't you think you owe me an explanation? The photos had a watermark indicating they were from a Xiaomi phone. I use an iPhone, so I wasn't worried she'd suspect me. Her expression was a bit unnatural given the sudden shift in emotions. But she still tried to justify herself, saying, I just ran into an old classmate during the trip, and we had a meal together. What's wrong with that? As expected, that was her excuse. I calmly switched to the next photo. The second photo showed my girlfriend feeding the scumbag with her own spoon. The atmosphere in the room became tense. Her parents, her friends, everyone turned to look at her. Her eyes began to dart around nervously. At that moment, I felt like the scene deserved a voiceover, first blood, but she stubbornly insisted, saying, it's not what you think. I was just worried that the dish might be too spicy, so I let my friend taste it first. I remained composed, feeling a cat and mouse thrill inside. It's fine, keep lying. I'm not angry, after all. We're just getting started. The image changed to a third photo, showing the two of them holding hands as they left the airport together. My girlfriend's mom couldn't hold back any longer and asked who this man was. My girlfriend, now stuttering, said he was just an old classmate, but her confidence was clearly shaken. Double kill. Chapter 16. Her mother smacked her hard on the back, demanding she explain things clearly to avoid any misunderstandings on my part. She said they just happened to be on the same flight, and she accidentally twisted her ankle when they got off the plane. So he helped her. It's like helping an elderly person cross the street, she claimed, insisting there was nothing inappropriate between them. What a ridiculous excuse. Who helps an old lady cross the street by interlocking fingers? I hadn't said a word the entire time, 
No accusations. No anger, just letting her dig her own grave. Everyone in the room wasn't stupid. They could all see through her lies. Triple kill. But I wasn't done yet. Next was a video. And the room filled with gasps. My girlfriend glanced at it and nearly lost her balance. It showed the two of them entering a hotel together. It was the video I took last night. Quadra kill. I asked her calmly. Was this another coincidence? Finally. I played the most dramatic scene from last night's confrontation, the one where my girlfriend got beaten up and humiliated by the scumbag's fiancé, with the lingerie being pulled over her head. It was as humiliating as it gets. One of her classmates couldn't help but exclaim, holy shit, her parents were too ashamed to look. I sighed and sat down on the sofa, burying my face in my hands, not to cry, but to suppress the urge to laugh. Penta Kill. Chapter 17. Her mother. Voice trembling suggested that there must be some misunderstanding and asked if I could talk to her daughter privately to clear things up. At that point, her friends began making excuses to leave, one by one. After everyone had left, her father suddenly charged at her and slapped her hard across the face. She cried out, humiliated and furious, breaking down into sobs. Then her father turned to me and said, Xiao Lu, I know she's been spoiled by us, but you know she's not a bad person at heart. You two were about to get married and I think any issue can be resolved if you talk it out. Don't give up on each other so easily. I rubbed my forehead, pretending to be exhausted. I said, Uncle, I was really happy to invite you here today to witness this. But as you can see, someone sent me these things, probably to show me the truth. I'm really confused right now and need some time to think. Maybe you should take her back home for now, and we can talk again once we've both calmed down. Without even looking at my girlfriend, I walked into the bedroom. I don't know when her parents left but my girlfriend tried to talk to me. I didn't open the door. That night, she sent me a series of long messages, like someone with split personalities. In the first half of the night, she sincerely apologized, admitting her mistakes, and promised to obey me from now on, swearing she would treat me well. But in the second half, she suddenly started accusing me, saying that all I did was spend money on her without understanding what she truly wanted. Thank you very much, but you seem to forget that I've been covering all the expenses since we got together. The next morning, she was gone. By noon, her best friend told me that my girlfriend was moving in with her. Her parents later called me, saying they had harshly reprimanded their daughter and begged me to forgive her this time, assuring me she would never make such a mistake again. I ignored it all. Meanwhile, I checked her alternate Facebook account and saw a new post. Does a princess have to marry a prince? Maybe the knight is her true destiny. Pfft. I don't mind if she wants to be a princess, but what kind of princess sneaks around at midnight, sending flirtatious messages to the knight behind the prince's back? Chapter 18. I went to chat with the scumbag and heard some good news, things were going much better than I expected. The scumbag had broken up. Good. Perfect. Because without the breakup, how could they relive their old romance? I was worried he might not be able to cut ties with his ex. I pretended to show concern and then encouraged him to go after the class beauty. I said, you're one lucky guy. A beautiful woman like her can't stop thinking about you. If I were you, I'd be overwhelmed with emotion. I said even peanuts have their perks. They can be used to make oil and oil is something you need every day, right? I told him that my regrets couldn't be undone, but he still had a chance, so don't miss it. The scumbag, who had already been scolded enough by his ex-fiancé, started showing some rebellious emotions, and after hearing my words, he agreed. I told him I wished them a happy and sweet life together. A few days later, my ex-girlfriend suddenly sent me a message saying that it was time to go our separate ways, and that after two years together, I hadn't lost out either. So, she had no feelings for me all this time. Should I be grateful that I had some money to earn her favor? I checked her alternate account and saw an update with a photo of two people holding hands. This time, I choose love. I turned off my phone, packed up all her things that were still at my place, and had them sent directly to her best friend's house. Chapter 19 In the days that followed, I made excuses about being on a business trip and didn't pay much attention to the scumbag's inquiries about insurance. I hired some people to call the scumbag's company and complain about him. At first, I thought about organizing dozens or hundreds of complaint calls, but then I figured that would be too obvious, so I settled for one or two complaints a week, just enough to give him a hard time. From time to time, I checked up on my ex-girlfriend's alternate Facebook account, which had now become a record of her new romance. There were only two words to describe it. Dirty. Pathetic. After about a month, I thought it was time, so I used an old trick, sending my ex-girlfriend a message from an unknown number saying that her men had spent 799 yuan at a certain massage parlor on a certain date. As expected, they had a big fight. The scumbag came to vent to me, asking if he was having a run of bad luck because nothing seemed to be going right. At work, his boss scolded him every day, and his new girlfriend, who was sweet at first, now wouldn't stop picking fights. All women are the same. 
He said. What a pain. I said. Bro. Listen to yourself. You've got such a beautiful girlfriend who loves you. How can you not be the envy of everyone? He said that now the novelty had worn off. And he was starting to regret it. All women are the same after a while. He said. And the class beauty is way too much of a princess. She never sets foot in the kitchen. And housework. Forget it. At least my ex fiance was diligent. She'd come over and clean the house and cook even though we didn't live together. But this new one doesn't even know which side the fridge opens from. With work not going well, he didn't have the patience to deal with the class beauty. And now they were arguing every three days over little things and every five days over big things. I cursed him in my mind, thinking he deserved it. But out loud I said some meaningless words to comfort him. Bro, that's just how relationships are. You just need to find the right rhythm. Chapter 20. Behind his back. I kept the complaints against him coming at the same pace. One day, he suddenly contacted me, feeling down, saying he wanted to take me out to dinner. I said sure, it's been a while since we last met. We went to the same barbecue place as before, and after two bottles of beer, the scumbag started pouring his heart out. He told me he'd been fired. I pretended to be shocked. What happened? Looking frustrated, he cursed, saying that some people, just because they have a little money, think they're superior. He tried to please them but couldn't satisfy them and if something didn't go their way, they complained until it cost him his job. I patted him on the shoulder and said, don't worry, a job can be found again. He even apologized to me, saying that he hadn't even had the chance to provide his services. I pretended to be offended. That sounds like you don't consider me a brother. He looked at me with a bitter smile. Bro, you don't know. At work, I have to serve a bunch of picky customers all day, and then I come home to a queen who only knows how to spend money. He couldn't understand why women had so many ways to spend money. He said getting a manicure cost 2,000 yuan, recharging at the hair salon 3,000, and all the clothes had to be dry cleaned. Going shopping didn't cost less than 5,000 yuan. Then there were beauty treatments and hyaluronic acid injections. 10 sessions for 15,000 yuan. She had so many clothes and shoes that there was no space left at home. After a month with her, he had already spent nearly 10,000 yuan, and she was still pushing him to buy a house and a car. Asking why he didn't do it sooner to enjoy it longer, the scumbag complained. Bro. Do you hear what she's saying? Do you think I don't have a house or a car because I don't want them? I shook my head. Bro, I believe in you. You'll have them sooner or later. I almost forgot. This guy had planned to live off a woman before. Now that he can't mooch off anyone, he has to fend for himself. He then said that the class beauty only earned 4,000 yuan a month, and he didn't understand how she dared to spend so much. Of course you don't understand, because it was me, her fool of an ex-boyfriend, who spoiled her, that night. I drank quite a bit with him. The more he regretted it, the happier I felt. The worse things were between them, the more satisfaction I got. Chapter 21. After talking with the scumbag, I suddenly remembered that I still had the intimate payment service enabled for my ex-girlfriend. When I checked, I saw that she had been making purchases for the past month. I immediately disabled it. The next day, she called me, sounding indignant, asking why I suddenly turned off the payment service. I was taken aback. I paused for a few seconds and then said, Maybe it's because I don't want to pay for someone else's wife. And then she suddenly started crying, demanding to know why I was being so heartless. She admitted she had gotten close to that guy, but insisted she never did anything to betray me. Didn't I remember all the happy times we had together? She must have thought I didn't know she had already hooked up with the scumbag and moved in with him. I said, you two were holding hands when you entered the hotel. She firmly replied, we got separate rooms. I said, do I really need to show you the video of you both entering the room together? Let's leave each other some dignity. She went silent. After a while, she said, What if I told you we booked a double bed, would you believe me? I told her to get lost. Her best friend was really loyal to her, occasionally hinting and asking me if I still had feelings for her and if we could go back to the way things were. I replied, What do you think? I'm a normal guy, not some pushover from a cheesy novel. That night, after the scumbag sobered up, he called me the next day, apologizing profusely, saying, Bro, you're a busy man and I took up your time with all my nonsense. I said, don't think that way, brother. If you're ever feeling down or need to talk, just reach out. Always happy to be your source of amusement. The following month, he told me he couldn't take it anymore and broke up with the class beauty. They were really incompatible. No kidding, I saw that from the start. Why else would I go to the trouble of pushing you two together? A spoiled princess and a guy used to mooching off others. Even a blind person could see it wouldn't work. Chapter 22. I checked my ex-girlfriend's alternate account and all those overly sentimental posts were gone, leaving only one update, mistaking a streetlight for the moon. My only reaction was to think, cheap, the so-called, unforgettable first love, had turned out to be nothing more than a fleeting infatuation. Later, my ex-girlfriend called me again, 
pitifully saying she couldn't find a suitable place to rent and asked if she could stay at my place for a few days, even if it meant sleeping on the couch. I told her, you can rent a one-bedroom apartment for less than 2,000 yuan. If you can't find one, try a different agent. She said she had her eye on a nicely furnished two-bedroom, but it cost nearly 3,000 yuan, which she couldn't afford. I laughed and said, what does that have to do with me? When we were together, I was happy to spend money on you, but now that we're apart, it's none of my business. I didn't hold back at all. I thought she'd feel ashamed and stay away from me, but I underestimated her shamelessness. I hadn't gotten around to changing the door code, so she moved in without telling me, bringing along stuff her parents had prepared, random local specialties, chickens bought from the countryside, and a talisman her parents had gone up the mountain early in the morning to get for me. I guess the temptation of a house and a car was too much to resist. She said she couldn't believe I'd be so heartless, otherwise, why hadn't I changed the code? Damn. I was tempted to throw the evidence of her cohabitation with the scumbag in her face, but I didn't get the chance. Her dumb best friend came through for me again. It's true what they say, life is stranger than fiction. Her best friend knew she had moved back in with me and brought a suitcase full of clothes to my place too. When they came in, thinking I wasn't home, her friend loudly said, that guy, triple X, looks decent enough, but how can he earn so little? His apartment is so tiny that your winter clothes don't even fit. They've been sitting at my place for two months and I can finally return them to you. Wow. The amount of information in that statement was overwhelming. Just then, I walked out of the bathroom, and her best friend froze, stammering as she said, I was just talking nonsense, don't take it seriously. I didn't need to think about it or say much. I threw out my ex-girlfriend's suitcase before she even had a chance to unpack. I kicked both of them out and locked the door behind them. My ex-girlfriend screamed outside for half an hour, but I ignored her. In the end, they were escorted away by security. Chapter 23 Later, I heard from a mutual friend that my ex-girlfriend was now desperately trying to catch a rich guy, aiming to find another golden goose. She still had a lot of suitors, but she wasn't interested in any of them. Her parents had given her a task, she must find another wealthy man, the kind who can give her a house and a car. I couldn't help but laugh. Those things I said to make her regret leaving me had actually set this whole greedy family's expectations so high. The scumbag later reached out to me on WeChat saying he had found a new job and was now planning to buy a house. He had his eye on a great property and started dropping hints about needing money, eventually outright asking to borrow some from me. He said, bro, don't worry, I promise I'll pay you back. You can trust my character. To hell with that, like I'd ever trust your so-called character. I made an excuse, saying all my money was tied up in investments in the stock market, and then I encouraged him to take out a loan online. I said, go ahead and take the loan, houses wait for no one. Once I can free up my money, I'll lend it to you to pay off the loan, and I won't even charge you interest, the scumbag, delighted, said, bro, you're the best, the day he bought the house, he said he wanted to treat me to dinner to thank me, he mentioned that he took out a loan of about 500,000 yuan, I called him an idiot and immediately blocked him, I didn't feel the slightest bit guilty, this was exactly what he deserved, 